Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo. Um, I want to discuss a question that was asked on our Telegram group, the Nigerian Excel users. And um, what is it really? It's pretty simple, maybe, if I may say. We just want to find a count of the number of Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and you know every other day that we have between a start date and an end date, okay? So between 1st of February 2020 and 29th of February 2020, how many Mondays or Sundays, Tuesdays do I have? The only twist to this now is that you have a list of holidays in this case, and you want to see a count that excludes those holidays, okay? So if I have four Sundays, but one of them is a holiday, okay, well, maybe Sunday may not be a good example, maybe four Tuesdays, and one of them is a holiday, then... I should calculate three here rather than four. So it's two pieces. So first of all, we just need to know, okay, fine, what day is a particular date? What day is the date? Then the second thing is, is the date um, a holiday? So those are the two pieces that we just need to, you know, bring um, together. Okay. So how do we know, fine, what day the date is? Excel has the weekday function. The weekday function can tell you the day of the week in numbers 1 to 7, you know, that a date represents. So depending on your argument, Monday could be 1 or Sunday could be 1. So let's take the default, which would take Sunday as day 1. So if I get 7, it means that 1st of February is a Saturday. That's what it means. Okay. So once I know that, I need to kind of use the weekday function to test for every date between this start date and the end date, both of them inclusive. So it's going to give me an array of, you know, 1 to 7 like that. So let's, let's start off. First thing you need to know, I can explain this in more detail in some other videos, but let's just start off. Now, if you want to create, so to say, an array of numbers like a series, you can easily use the row function. With Office 365 now, you can use the sequence function, but I assume most users are not on Office 365, so let's go the conventional way. So if I do something like row 2 to 5, it's just going to give me, what do you expect this to give me if you evaluate this? 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to evaluate each of them from 2 to 5 and tell you what row that is. So meaning that if I feed it with the start date and end date, and put a row around it, I can get those numbers individually and create a series from start to end. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to do is just to put the indirect in there, just to make sure things are in their place. So indirect, I will construct it like I would normally do. I will lock this just the same way, which is kind of like start and column and finish. That's just what it is which is exactly like the 2 to 5. So that's it's not any different from that. Okay. So now I always like to evaluate as I go ahead. So you see what's going on. So press your F9. So you see what you have? You have an array of numbers. Of course, you know these numbers are the data equivalents. Of course, here, you know numbers stored as, uh, you know, data, data, dates, and numbers actually just uh, shown in the date format. So 43862, that's your 1st of February. 43890, that's your um, end date. Okay. So once you have this, all of that, you can put the weekday function around. If you put the weekday function around them, it's going to give you what day of the week each of those dates are. So it's going to be something from 1 to 7, 1 to 7, like that. So let's evaluate this piece. F9 again. So you see? So it starts from 7, meaning that it starts from a Saturday, then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on, like that. So you have this piece done. So this is the part that tells you what day, you know, that date is, which was the first question I said we would answer. The second question now is, okay, fine, is the date a holiday? There are so many ways, you know, you can maybe check this. But one way you can do it is you can use uh, the match function. So you try to match that date in this holiday list, you know, and if it gives you um, an error, then it means that it's not found. If it doesn't give you an error, then it means that it's found. Okay, so let me just um, put a, um, what's it called, an apostrophe here. What I want to do for this holiday list, just to make it, um, you know, easily dynamic so that when I add more dates, it would keep expanding. It's just to convert this to a table. So to convert this to a table, you can press Control T or you can go to Insert and press Table. 
So control T, yes, and I say OK. All right, then I need to rename the table just so that I have a name that I can easily use. So I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this holiday list. Okay, so when I refer to holiday list, it knows, you know, what I'm referring to. Okay, so I can come back to this. Now I have this part done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both of them together because I'm trying to see those get you know those that are of course all the days and whether they are holidays or not. So this will be my first piece, which will be this and this. Then I go to my second piece. So let me start building the second piece. What do I need here? I need to use the match function and say match the dates within the holiday list and see if it gives you a zero or it gives you an any. What are my dates? My dates are essentially everything in this row in here. Those will give me my dates. If you remember, that's how we created them in the first place. So these are all the dates, right? So that's our lookup value for the match function. The next thing is asking us is the lookup array. We are looking it up in holiday list. So you can just type that. Since you've created a table, you would see it when you start typing. Okay, and we are doing an exact match, which is zero. Now, what do you expect this to give you? If you highlight this portion and check, you see that it's going to give you zeros where uh, numbers where it's found, and you know n is where those dates are not found. Let me expand my formula bar. So you see, so you see a couple of n is, and you see some numbers here, one, two, three. So it means that you know. Why, once you try to match them, if it can't find it, then it means it's not a holiday. Then if it finds it, it means it's a holiday because it found it there. So do Ctrl Z. Okay. So now what I can then do out here is to check, is it NA, meaning that does it return, you know, an error? If it returns an error, it's going to give me true. If it doesn't return an error, it's going to give me false. The trues will be days that are not holidays. The falses will be days that are holidays. So let's try this piece out. You keep building and evaluating. That's a very good way. So you see true, true, true. All the falses here are the three dates that are in the holiday list. So once you have these pieces together, you multiply these arrays together. Here, don't forget we are having... Um, you know, numbers, so seven, this, 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 and that. That's what you have here. Then here you have, you know, the holiday portion. But I think we are missing something. Because, okay, here now we want to check if this first one is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, so there's a piece we need to put in here. So when you evaluate this whole weekday all the way to here, what you want to check is what does it equal to? If it's equal to one, then it means that in this case is a Sunday. And if it's equals to two, is a Monday, Tuesday, like that. So what you could do is that you can use the rows dollar one column one. Why are you using this construct? So that when you drag this formula down, this would become one to two, which will give you two for Monday. When you drag it down, three for Tuesday, and so on. So this now will tell us, okay, fine, true or false, whether it's a Sunday or not, then this part will tell us if it's a holiday. So let's evaluate everything together. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, so you can see the ones are the only numbers that, of course, are valid for both, which means that they are Sundays and they are also not holidays. So once you have this, you can then do your sum product. I'm using Office 365, so even if it's an array formula, you know, it still works all the same. So because of that, I may just put a one times here just for somebody else who it may not work for, but it should. And you have four here. If this formula is right, if you take this down, okay, so let's see. Let's reduce this a little. Okay, it says we have 26 days because, yeah, we have three public holidays. You can add another to the list, maybe 3rd of February. It would affect both your total and the count. Okay, so you can see that it's a Monday because Mondays were four before, but now they are three. So let's delete this again. So you can see four when you redo control Y. That didn't seem to work. Well, I put it back. <laughs> Maybe something wrong with my undo memory. Okay, so and as you add more, it just calculates and adjusts accordingly. So 
the trick here is first of all to be able to create you know um, a sequence of dates check what day of the week they fall on you know one two three four five six seven from sunday to saturday then use the match function to check within the holiday list whether they are found or not you know to then create a list of trues and falses to know which are non-holidays and which are holidays and once you bring everything together you just use the sum product to kind of add it up together it's kind of uh, you know straightforward in a sense but yeah there are a few building blocks that you just need to be a little conversant with okay so thank you for watching like i would say if you can think it excel can probably do it if you like this video can subscribe to my channel can click the like button thank you and i'm out